southern hemisphere. We are upside down. We come from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. Whoa, we are back. They're going to do a ship for us. So we have a good Argentinian barbecue, a cordero, delicious. Mm. But to have it in the barbecue, first you have to do this. Butchering time in the culinary adventure, they're doing the carneando de cordero. You can see I have Pietro in the back, he's doing the typical Argentinian asador. Uh, how do you say it? Uh, cordero a la cruz, no? Al asador. It's like a cross. Shut up! I'm filming! I cannot worry about around all these animals screaming. But the loudest animal is Matias. Pelado, don't cut the cow, only cut the, a little sheep because it's very sabros. Here, Gaucho Duranona is creating some new language called Gaucho English. Ari, 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 you are watching culinary. Jure, 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 jure. <laughs> culinary adventure. Culo, culo, culo. This is the Gaucho that speaks English, and my name is Gaucho Bravo, and today we're going to show you the great technique of the asado. Ah, oh, very good. Hello, hello, hello. We are here in Argentina, Argentina, and the culinary adventures they're doing the cordero, a la espada, al asador, a la cruz. No. There's many different names they use here in Argentina. Shut up, chicken! Jeez. Director, please, do something about it. So as you can see, Pietro is a multitask gaucho. He can go and feed, ride the tractor, do the asado. Eh? Those are the duties of a ranch manager to make sure that everything is cows, you know, in winter is very tricky. Check it out. ¿Y tú es cuántas horas lo pones este cordero? Sí, a vos. Sí, supuestamente dos horas. ¿Cuántas horas? ¿Dos? Dos horas, un buen asador lo hacen dos horas, pero... ¿Y tiene algún secreto o...? Fuego y fuego sí, y sin apurarlo. Sin apurarlo mucho. Lento, slowly. Se puede poner para que las costillas no. No, como se llama, no se quemen, porque la, la parte de arriba precisa más calor. Entonces las costillas. Un chapón, ¿no? Se le pone una chapa acá atrás y a su vez le, se le pone un tarrito de durazno. O un, tar, un tarrito con agua al lado de las costillas, las costillas se humedecen y no se queman. ¿Eh? Ese sí. es un secreto, ¿viste? Para que las costillas no se, no se quemen. No se quemen, ¿viste? Here Pietro is giving, giving us a secret how not to burn the ribs on the ship. Because right up in the legs area is way thicker. So it takes longer time to cook and the ribs are thinner and they have a risk to, to be burned. So he put a little can with water, that water will moisturize the ribs, and therefore they will cook nice and tender and they won't burn. Great secret, I love it. But let's put this baby in the fire. Okay, they're doing a little trick here. They're putting some animal fat to feed the fire. See, fat not only feed people and animals, also feed the fire. Huh? Interesting fact. Fact. Lo importante esto es hacerlo lento y con 
siempre con fuego constante. No aflojarle nunca el fuego. It's a very slow process. Imagine it's nine o'clock in the morning. We start cooking the cordero. Okay, we're setting up to do a, a chicken al disco. Pollo al disco, the things that they use for um, cultivation, for harvest. And it, it works kind of like a walk. It's, very, it's a very interesting technique. And we are going to check it out in two minutes right here at the Culinary Adventures. We're going to cook a farm chicken. We'll be right back in the Culinary Adventures. A few minutes, commercials, we need the sponsor. We are going to be cooking this baby in the asador at the Santa Elena Ranch in Chascomús, Argentina. Sí, señor. Yeah.